time. America's influence, a call to national repentance and restoration. Jeremiah 27 verse 5 tells us, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are on the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. Someone wise once said, God is indeed on a throne of grace, but that is no less glorious and suited to inspire reverence than a throne of judgment. America's influence, a call to national repentance and restoration. Want to know more? Hang around. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Lions Roar 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us, a lion or the lion has roared who will not fear. The Lord God has spoken who can but prophesy. My name is George Magalhães and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, we're going to talk about something very important. Now, some of you from America would definitely want to hear this. Some of you from Australia may be wondering, what's that got to do with me? Hang around. It's got a lot to do with us, has a lot of impact on our nations. In fact, on the world itself, what you're going to hear tonight. Bringing us to our main verse today. And our main verse today, as you heard at the beginning, comes from the book of Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 5 this time reading from the amplified classic version i have made the earth the men and the beasts that are upon the face of the earth but by my great power and by my outstretched arm and i have i have given it to whomever it seems right and suitable to me Hallelujah. All right. Since it is a very, very good word today, it's actually a prophetic word that was given to Prophet Sabrina, which happens to be my lovely wife. She's here. Uh, she'll be with us tonight. That's In right. In fact, as I said, we're going to be speaking about America's influence. America's influence. That's right. A call to national repentance and restoration. So this word is founded on a God-given word, a prophetic word revealed on August the 6th. That's right. 2024. That's right. All right. As we delve into this prophetic message that speaks directly to the United States of America and its role in the world, we will explore how the spiritual condition of America influences global events, emphasizing the urgency of the times we are in and our call to action. As usual, this study will be divided into several key sections, which Sabrina will cover uh, most of them as the key speaker today. And I will further complement with my own insights as, as well as obviously biblical supporting evidence. We will first start with the context. So in this first section, the context, we will look at the Jeremiah. context from Jeremiah 26 to understand the season that America has, has shifted from, has just shifted from and how it relates to the message in Jeremiah 27. Following our context will be key points, very, very crucial key points for in fact, of which the following subsections will be examined. The first key point will be take not for granted the election battle. Take not for granted the election battle. In this section, we will discuss the spiritual significance of America's upcoming elections, emphasizing God's will, a call to repentance for the nation, and the influence God's people carry for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Now, your choice will get you what you deserve. That's key point number two. Your choice will get you what you deserve. Listen, 
In this section, we'll explore how America's choices will determine its future, underscoring the biblical principle that a nation reaps what it sows and the importance of recognizing the times. There is hope. That's our third key point today. There is hope. In this section, we will highlight the hope that remains for God's people, for those who align themselves with the Lord and his ways. The God of restoration is number four. The God of restoration in this section, we highlight the absolute goodness of the Lord, the God of restoration, and his promises is available to all those who turn to him. And finally, it's not a key point, but finally, we will complete, we will conclude today's study with a call to action. We will conclude with a call to action to prayer and repentance, urging the nation and nations, believers around the world, to seek God's face in these critical times. So as we journey through this study, may our hearts be open to what God is saying to us today. Let's pray. Would you like to pray and then start off? Right. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, as we unpack the word that you have given me on the 6th of August, Lord God, we pray that it's not our word, not our intent, but what you have said and what you want to, Father God, say to your people, Lord God, let it bring glory to your name and bring across, Lord God, the impact that you want it to have. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So as um, George was sharing August the 6th, um, God um, gave me this prophecy. So we're going to share with you from the Lord what the Lord said. This message is about the United States of America and the season and time that America has stepped into. When the Lord revealed this word to me, I said, Lord, you have to give me verses from your word to confirm, to back it up. You know, I don't want to be, I uh, don't want to just say, okay, this is what God has said to me without having his word to back it up and um, what you have spoken to me. And thus God gave me Jeremiah 27. Now this biblical chapter will be the foundation from which we will understand what the Lord has revealed for such a time as this. Now, this is a chapter that God has um, um, used uh, to talk to me to reveal what he's saying, not taking away any, any other biblical verses that other prophets got from God, right? It's the overall of the message that we need to listen to and, and what God is saying, right? Now, while speaking to God about the injustice occurring in the land, God told me that there was a few key points that many Christians seem to have overlooked and that we must understand. So before we delved into Jeremiah 27, we have to first understand the context from Jeremiah 26. Why? Because we need to understand the season, which I believe from which America just shifted from and why we understanding this season will explain, will give us an explanation of why Jeremiah 27 is where they are at understand now jeremiah chapter uh, chapter 26 verse 4 to 6 from their nkjv version says this chap, um, verse 4 and you shall say to them thus says the lord if you will not listen to me to walk in my law which i have set before you number five to heed the words of my servants the prophet whom i sent to you both rising up early and sending them but you have not heeded now um do you want to use a different version to explain the same thing yeah so in the amplified classic version uh verse number five says and to hear and obey the words of my servants the prophets whom i have sent to you urgently and persistently though you have not listened and obeyed right verse six then i will make this house like 
Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. Do you want to give that in a different version? Okay, in the Amplified Classic again, it says, numbers, verse number six, Then I will make this house, the temple, like Shiloh, the home of the tent of meeting, abandoned and later destroyed after the ark was captured by the Philistines. Hmm. Philistines. Palestine. Hmm. Let's keep going. <laughs> and I will make this city subject to the curses of all nations of the earth. So vile in their sight will it be. Why Jeremiah 26? Well, just like God told the people of Judah to repent so that he may relent. Listen, so that he may what? Relent on the calamity he planned for the nation, right? They did not listen. So it, so it has been with the United States of America. God has been using his prophet telling, telling the, um, the United States of America, you, it's, it's, you need to obey. You need to go back to your forefathers, to the root, the godly root that there is. But there's been no listening. Now, when God gives us a warning, he always gives us a way out. For it is not his will that anyone would perish especially a nation like America, which was built on biblical godly values and principles. Unfortunately, it is clear throughout the Bible, at times, no matter how many chances give them, some people just refuse to repent or acknowledge their wicked ways. And when it, this point in time is reached, a reset is necessary. Just like in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, if we check all those, there's some verses that I'm going to give, and um, George will read those verses to complement everything I've just said, to back it up. Now, if we're going to check Genesis 13, 13, and Genesis 19, verse 5, we're going to check Ezekiel uh, chapter 16, verse 49 to 50. Then we're going to check um, Leviticus um, 18, 22, and Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Okay. I'm not going to do them all, just do a few of them. All right. Uh, just so I can also give a slight explanation, focus and emphasis on each verse. So Genesis 13, 13 in the Amplified Classic says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and exceedingly great sinners against the Lord. Now, emphasis on against the Lord. Against the Lord. It is an intentional defiance. An intentional attack on the Lord. Does that sound familiar? Mm. Ezekiel 16, 49 to 50. Now, Ezekiel 16, 49 to 50 in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, The crimes of his sister Sodom were pride and gluttony. She and her daughters were careless and, and complacent, so that, that they did nothing to help the poor and needy, Mm -hmm. They were arrogant and committed disgusting acts before me, so that when I saw it, I swept them away. Again, emphasis on intentional sin before the Lord. Despite the Lord, in defiance, intentional defiance, an attack on the Lord. You just have to look at the recent Olympics. Therefore, God is left with no choice but to sweep them away lest they lead others in their ways. Jude 1, let me read that one out. Jude 1 verse 7 in the Amplified Classic says, The wicked are sentenced to suffer, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the ad adjacent towns, which likewise gave themselves over to impurity and indulged in unnatural vice and sensual perversity are laid out in plain sight as an exhibit of perpetual punishment to warn of everlasting fire. I think that one speaks for, for itself. itself. Right? So with the context in mind, will now reveal God's word from Jeremiah 27, highlighting the four key points to consider in order to step into the God-appointed plans and future. Now, key points number one. Take not for granted the election battle. Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 5 from the NKJV version, I'm going to read it, right? I have made the earth, the man and the beast, 
that are on the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given the given it to whom it seemed proper to me so what does that mean therefore the election battle in america is not about which individual is more godly so that the better one is elected and saves america no 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 no, no. it is only god's way his will and practices obtains through the nation's repentance that brings about God's plan. Okay, so in other words, let me give my my two bucks or whatever yeah, you want more to say. Than that. Gold. <laughs> in other words, God in his infinite glorious plan has appointed his leader, his anointed one for such a time as this. But it is not the leader who saves, but God. So God is not limited in the number of servants or leaders he can use. For the leaders is but an instrument in God's hands to fulfill his good purpose and future for America and the world. And the world. This is without any doubt, and we must make this absolutely clear, this is without any doubt a battle between good and evil. It's not just a political thing. Don't think of this word as, oh, he's just talking about America. It's a political. -uh. This is very, very crucial uh, uh, time, a critical time in our history, in humanity. That's it right. It really is. And without any doubt, as I said before, it is a battle between good and evil. And God's people, along with the nation, play a part in the outcome. God is all sovereign, absolutely. Nevertheless, in his absolute goodness, he chooses to rule over the earth through the free will That's of the people. Point. That's a key point, through the free will of the people. So how the nation and God's people respond will determine whether or not good, God's good plans are fulfilled or not. Now, for other nations... Remember, what happens in America affects the whole world. It affects. It's like a, it's like a domino effect. Because what is permissible over there tends to be a trend that goes that starts in other places. Now let's keep going. Key points number two: Your choice will get you what you deserve. Mark my words, America, choose wisely, for you have stepped in a time where you will get what you deserve. Let's read Jeremiah 11, verse 6 to 8 from the NKJV. Then the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the city of Judea and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear the words of this covenant and do them. Verse 7, For I earnestly exhorted your fathers in the day I brought, uh, I brought them up, out of the land of Egypt until this day, rising early and exhorting, saying, Obey my voice. Verse 8. Yet they did not obey or incline their ears, but everyone followed the dictates of his evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but which they have not done. Let's continue. In Jeremiah 11, um, chapter 11, verse 11 to 13 from the NKJV version. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Mm. Verse 12. Then the cities of Judea and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense. But they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble verse 13 for according to the number of your cities were your gods O judea and according to the number of the streets of jerusalem jerusalem you have set up altars to that shameful thing altars to burn incense to baal you know what is some of those states done that speak for itself therefore if the united states of america continues to do as they wish and God's people ignore or take for granted the times and the call to repentance, America will get the president they deserve. 
as I mentioned before, the election battle in America is not about which individual is more godly so that the better one is selected and saves America. No, it is only God's way, his will and practices. His what? His will and practices obtained through the nation's repentance that brings about godly plans. So it's not about like saying, oh, this one wasn't good enough or that, that, that one or this one. No, it's like George explained before. It's a corporate thing. It's, a, it's about the people of America as a whole. So <clears throat> just to clarify here, this is not a, a, a warning doom and gloom message no. in any way because this is a prophetic word that God gave gave you on the 6th of august that's right this year this is a way out this is a call to national repentance that's right and restoration god wants to restore america he america began as a nation under biblical values yep america is a superpower and it's been blessed abundantly because of its of its christian values that were established in its foundational roots in, in the right. history of america but the reality is we have to be real here it's it's been it's been going downhill it's been um what's the word uh, the christian christian christianese word for it it's been um backsliding oh. backsliding if let me make this clear it is the united states of america has now reached a point in time where god will not be taken for granted any longer mm -mm. There's been a lot of grace, yes. and God is a God of grace, but he is not to be mocked. That's true. He is not to be mocked. And at the, sound, at the risk of sounding extreme, the truth is the upcoming elections will not only transform America, but will have drastic ramifications on the whole world. Mm -hmm. If the West's superpower which is America, chooses spiritual suicide, God will grant them into their evil ways. And an inevitable reset will remain as the only option for salvation. Mm -hmm. So, however, as 2 Chronicles 7.14, we must remember this, as 2 Chronicles 7.14 reveals, if God's people, what if God's people mm -hmm. lead first by example, humble themselves and pray and seek god's face turn from their wicked ways mm -hmm. in other words turn away from your weird programs and and shows and and, and i'm not saying that that conferences and seminars don't have its place but come on stop all that nonsense entertainment and all that and take this seriously this is a very serious moment in the history of humanity Turn from your wicked ways, start in the church, then God will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and, and heal, heal their, their land. land. Amen. Your our focus as Christian needs to be God. Our focus, our main point is not how to keep people in the church, but to ignite the fire in the in people's heart to focus on God and to do the right thing the right way like it says in i think it was in ezekiel the right thing the right way mm. let's keep going somewhere there it's in the old testament all right number three there is hope again like we say whatever word god give if it's a warning he always give a way out he is a good good father unlike how it may sound god's people will not suffer needlessly because you might be saying but i've done the right thing lord well, I'm done the right thing and they've done the wrong thing. I'm going to pay for it. Well, I did ask that question to God. So this is what I was told. Unlike how it may sound, God's people will not suffer needlessly. God sees all and is just forevermore. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 18 from the AMPC, right? But if they are true prophet and if the word of the Lord is really spoken by them, let them now make what? intercession to the lord of hosts that the vessels which are still left in the house which are what still left that's talking to the remnants to the people that is is um is on fire who's like not giving up in the house of the lord in the house of the king of judah and in jerusalem 
may not go to Babylon. Therefore, brother and sister, do not lose heart. As children of God, we have this assurance that when we pray, God what? hears us and preserve and guide us in times of trouble. Like he, like it's mentioned, I'll give you two, uh, two examples. Psalm 23 and Psalm 121, verse 7 to 8. You want to read that? Which one? We'll read Psalm 121, verse 7 to, um, to 8. Okay, I'm going to read actually Psalm 121, but I'm going to read from uh, verses 1 to, to eight. 8. Okay. But before I do that, I just want to add something that you just spoke about. So in that verse, it says that, that the vessels which are still left in the house mm -hmm. of the Lord, as That's you right. said, the remnant. That's right. In other words, even now, you may say, but I'm the only one. Elijah thought he was the only prophet that was standing up against the prophets of Baal. But God said no. But God said no, there's more. And even if there's two, remember, even Abraham, even Abraham spoke to God on behalf of Lot and his family. One man can still change mm -hmm. a nation. One man can change a city. Likewise, we, uh, you have the power to change your nation. That's now, right. let me read Psalms 121, 1 to 8. And there's a reason why I'm reading it, because I want to give you the context so it makes sense instead of reading it just from verse 7. Okay. So Psalms 121, 1 to 8, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I will lift up my eyes to the hills of Jerusalem. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber briefly nor sleep soundly. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will guide your going out and your coming in. Everything that you do from this time forth and forever. Did you hear that? So in other words, there is hope for those who first, as you just heard, lift up their eyes unto whom? Unto what? Unto God the God of the universe, for those who seek help from the Lord, the keeper of our lives. If you are one of those, then you do not have to worry. But in everything you do, in your going out and your coming in, God will lead you according to his plans. Amen. Amen. Number four, the God of restoration. Do not despair. God is in the business of restoration. Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 22 from the AMPC version, right? They will be carried to Babylon and there will they be until the day that I visit them with my favor, says the Lord. Then I will bring them back and restore them to this place. Therefore, therefore, God will not leave America where it is. But he will restore America, listen to that bit, in his time. Like we said before, it depends. It depends. You're going to get the president you deserve. But nevertheless, no matter what happened, God is in the business of restoration. In his time, like it says in, that, um, in verse 22, he will restore America. We need to keep in mind that God's plan is perfect in all his ways. He is the God of our salvation and he will make a way in his time. He is our father who knows and is well capable of bringing his children back to himself. As we keep doing the right thing, the right way, as per Micah chapter 6 verse 8, we must prayerfully and in unity consider what God desires for America and as a whole and act accordingly. All right, so let me read Micah 6 verse 8 that you just mentioned. Micah 6 verse 8 in the Amplified Version says, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you ex except to be just and to love and to dil diligently practice kindness, compassion, 
and to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. So let's not fool ourselves. As I said before, America is in a very bad place right now. That's the truth. That's the reality. In fact, as I said before, the whole, the whole Western world, more specifically, has gone insane and in desperate, serious need of restoration. Not a human kind of great reset, but a godly restoration that is only found, only found in Christ Jesus alone. Whatever the choice America decides, the Lord is a God of restoration and in his absolute goodness, justice, holiness, complete perfection that he is, he will always provide a choice of restoration. This brings us to a call to action, a call to action. Okay, George, you twisted my arm. I want to pray for my country. I want to pray for America right now. I need to pray. You're right. You're absolutely right. How would I pray for America? All right. Great question, buddy. That's why this part is called the call to action. This is the kind of prayer you should be praying for your country right now. So listen carefully. Heavenly Father, we come before you in humility, acknowledging the urgent times we are in. We repent for the sins of our nation and ask for your mercy. Lord, give us as we seek your face. Guide us and help us to turn away from our wicked ways. Restore the United States of America according to your will and let your righteousness reign. Empower your people to stand firm in truth, influencing our nation and the world with your love and justice. May our choices align with your divine purpose and may your peace and restoration flow across this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now that was a call for action in how if you are in America, you need to pray. And as we we keep going, we're going to pray for America. So any Australia, you mean? No, you want well. Oh, you want to pray for America? Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. In so, a different manner. In a different <laughs> manner. So we're gonna pray for America in a different manner. Not, not as someone who's living there. So anyone who's listening online right now, like we, we spoke what, what's happening in America and the influences that America has with every other countries around the world, we also, we are called to pray for America, right? So this is a mannerism on, in, in how we need to pray for America, right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for America. We pray for the election coming. We ask, Lord, that the people of America is awakened to your will and purpose, that the spirit of repentance take hold of America. Yes. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 4 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Lord, we are praying for the land to be healed, Lord. We pray that you appoint a godly leader over America, one who will rule by the fear of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3, NKJV says, The Lord, the, sorry, the God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over man must be just, ruling in the fear of, of God. Lord, we pray that every lies, conspiracies, enemy infiltration be exposed and dealt with. Protect those who are standing on your word, Lord God, those who stand ground for godly change. Finally, Lord, we thank you for revival of America and healing, singing a new song over this country, Lord God, which bring glory to your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And as we pray, like George mentioned before, the whole Western, the whole Western countries, society needs a restoration. 
And what I'm going to do now is we're going, because we live in Australia, we want to pray for Australia because Australia is as deeply impacted about what's happening. The culture seems to be like whatever America is doing, it seems to take up something and then print it on, 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 um, on Australia. Maybe not to the same level, but it starts a culture of it. And we want to also say, if you are in a different countries, we're going to pray for Australia, right? And you can use the same prayer to pray for your country personally, because this is going to be a different type of prayer. Ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap for the leaders in our community, city, state, region, and country. We repent for the sins of our forefathers and those of our um, present generation. Forgive us for every law that would go contrary to your word. Forgive us, the church, for aligning with that which is contrary of who you call us to be. Lord, we pray that every lies, conspiracies, enemy infiltration be exposed and dealt with. We pray for revival over our country, that we, the church, take our place, Lord God, in the society as the light upon the hill, Lord God, whom you've called us to be. Lord, raise up leaders who will bring glory to your name, leaders who will serve you, Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2 from the AMPC version. First of all, then I admonish and urge that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in positions of authority or high responsibility, that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. These are all scriptures backing the prayers I'm, 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 I'm actually doing right now. So you know that it is from the Bible. Finally, Lord, we decree and declare that our nation is the inheritance of the Lord and you are the ruler over it. Psalm 22 verse 28 from the AMPC for the kingship and the kingdom are the Lord's, and he is a ruler over the nations. We pray all those, and we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. As you started praying, I saw something, so I better share this. I actually saw, I saw part of the map of Australia, and I saw the border was scars, and Australia had a lot of scars, but the border was a very deep scar that when we hurt ourselves and we get a scar you get a it starts creating what we say here in australia a scab yeah it's like this uh, uh it's like a dry skin over the wound it's a scab that that our bodies our immune system creates and over time that scab eventually disappears just falls off or whatever and i saw part of australia and especially the borders the scabs were so loose and i saw some fingers just going like this a big finger just going like this and it was falling off and australia was being healed so that the scars were still visible because you don't lose the scars but it was getting healed there was a healing happening so again i said and this is important in that vision is that it was not being taken out prematurely because when you take out a scab prematurely what what it does if it's ahead of time, is it bleeds again. it bleeds again? It reopens that wound. It wasn't doing that, so it's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing. And what you were praying into Australia, and I believe this is the vision that God showed us, showed me right now, is that God does want to restore. And the scars that have been going on, and the scars that have that His people, the body of Christ, have even taken upon themselves here in Australia. They've been crying out to the Lord for all the wickedness that's been going on, especially, specifically, as we just spoke today, in the authorities not being led by the Word of God, not being led by the God of the universe, but being led by their own Godheads themselves, their own ways. Um, and God is saying, I am allowing that I want restoration. And those scars, those that scab on those scars, they're going to fall off and I'm going to restore you and you're going to come back stronger. It's like when you break a bone. It's like when you get, get a, a, it's the same thing as a scar. When you break a bone, the doctors usually tell you, you'll never break that, that bone in that spot again. You may break the same bone, but you do never break it in that same spot. It actually grows, fuses stronger. together stronger. And I know 
because I broke my collarbone. And it's, so I know. All right. Um, the other thing Thank is, you, Jesus, um, for that word. as George was talking, um, this is uh, this is a word I kept getting, and I'm waiting on God to say, okay, would you like me to speak that? Now I'm going to speak about the churches in uh, Australia. There's two part to it. The first part is repent. Repent. There has been a lot of God's children who has gone ahead of themselves and has been trying to say, I'm doing a godly thing. This is what I see God showing me. Many of those uh, pastors and churches saying, I'm doing a godly thing. I'm, I'm, um, I'm uh, keeping the people in, 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 in the church. I'm actually looking after them. But God is saying, I'm not calling you to just keep them. I'm not calling you to just um, um, satisfy them. I'm calling you to ignite them. I'm calling you to make sure that they can see that I am their source. It's not the church. It's not the building. It's not the, um, the program. It's a call that God is saying there's a call for repentance, a call for a deep crying out for deep, no more shallow because my, I see my people going into getting into trouble, but they are not equipped to know how to get out. They don't know me. They don't know me well. All they hear is one side of me. All they hear is I am this. If you pray this, I'm like, I'm going to grant it to you or that. Oh, hold on. Then. I want a relationship with my people. I want a relationship. I want my people to know me, to know the whole of me. My word is there. I've made it available. Teach my people. Teach my people. First. Second. The second one is for small churches. There are some small churches who are doing the right thing. It's not all doom and gloom. There are some churches who are doing the, uh, the right thing, small churches. Mostly it's been in the small churches. And God is saying that keep at it, faithful servants, keep at it. And you will see that the work that you have put, that God, that none of the works that you've done has, has gone unnoticed, that God noticed it. And soon you will see that there will be an and how do you call it um onslaught of people coming in because people who are hungry hungry and thirsty for the genuineness of of a relationship with god genuineness and i see that god is is, is got um when you know how you have wheat and you're harvesting it and they put it in this um it's like a i don't know how to say that in english tamin how do you say that like it's um they put it in, yeah they put it in a basket and then they sift, sift it they sift it and i see that god saying it's time to sift because i want the the healing and i want the restoration i don't want my my children to be hurt to be hurt and to be in a place where that i've seen them where they've been crying so i'm gonna sift and now i'm gonna keep the good it's time because god has allowed um there's a verse in the in, the, in his word about that where he allowed the good and the weeds to grow together and now it's time for him to pluck out the, the weeds from the good now, you may be new here and you may be thinking, wow, what is that? How do you know God is saying those things? Because we have a relationship with God. Amen. And you too can have a relationship with God. What you heard today, you're probably a little bit flabbergasted. It's a word we use here in Australia. You're probably a little bit confused and probably a little bit stunned on, I thought that only happened with psychics. Ooh. Now, the devil always imitates God. And even when he imitates, it's always crap. It's like it's like the original things that you have in America and Australia, and then, you, and then you buy one from China, and it doesn't work. Duh! It's fake. It's fake goods. It's fake. In other words, what's the word uh, uh, when it's something that's been copied? There's a word um, for that. Um, imitation. Yeah, it's an imitation. Anyways, the key here is this. The word of God says very clearly in 1 John 5, 4 to 5, that for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You're probably wondering, that's all nice and good. How do we overcome the world? For whatever is born of God. Do you want to overcome the world? Do you want to overcome the issues in your life? You have to be born of God. Amen. Which means you have to belong to Christ Jesus. That's right. And this is the victory, goes on to say, that has overcome the world. Our faith, your faith must be in Christ Jesus. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. John 3, 16, the 17 goes on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. 
that's talking about Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through, through his son, that the world through him might be, be saved. saved. So 1 John 1, 9 goes on to tell us very clearly that if you confess, if we confess our sins, and sin in the most simplistic de uh, uh, definition is when we live without God. You were not created to live without God. The only creation on all the universe is humanity that was created in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. We are created to be in relationship with God and with each other. Yet, yet, when you choose to live your life without God, that, that is the beginning of sin. That is sin itself. And all you need to do is confess your sins to God. And he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's right. Now, I, 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 I could hear someone saying that, how do you know? Have you lived without God? Yes. Both of us have testimony where we've lived without God. I've lived without God and I came to Christ. Then... I'm ashamed to say it, but I backslid. I backslid, and I know what it is to walk like a like like living dead is what I call it. You're living, but you're not living. So we are not just saying it; we've lived it. Keep going. So what do I need to do? Okay, let me show you what you need to do. If you look up on the screen, Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 tells you very clearly that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So wherever you are, in your house, in your workplace, in the bathroom, doesn't matter. You call out to God right now. As I am speaking to you in your own voice aloud, and he say a prayer along the lines like this one. You just say, if you are real, Lord, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I make you my Lord. And I choose to believe because remember, faith, trust comes by choice. That's right. And then it grows. I choose to believe that God raised you from the dead. Take my life and save me. Use me for your glory. Something along those lines. Say it in your own words. In your own words. Because the matter of the heart is the heart of the matter. Or the other way. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. It all comes down to your intention. It has to come from your heart. You have to mean it. But it doesn't stop there. So if you look at Titus 3, verse 5, Ephesians 2, verse 8, Acts 1, verse 8, amongst others in, in the word of God, it says, then he saves you. You mm -hmm. do that. You declare with, the, with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that, he, that God raised him from the dead and you are saved. And then he goes on to say that by grace, through faith, you are saved. The gift of God washing away your sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. What is that? And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. What that is, is called in our Christian circles, baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. So once you declare with, the, with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe, in your heart, uh, believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Then you invite Holy Spirit, which is the very Spirit of God to come and live inside of you. That's what that joy is about, the indwelling Holy Spirit. Spirit, and he will come and he will not leave you. He will use you as his temple, mm -hmm. as his synagogue, as his, mm -hmm. as his church, as his holy place, his indwelling place. And he will live inside of you and he will guide you. He will teach you, he will correct you. He will love on you. He will comfort you. He will equip you for what for the walk that you have exactly. in front of you. You and, will not be alone anymore. And he comes bearing gifts, spiritual gifts, because remember, we are made in the image of God and God is spirit. So we are spirit beings with a flesh, with a body and a soul. We are not human beings with a spirit and a soul. No, we are made in the image of God and God is spirit. Therefore, we are spirit beings with a body and a soul. He comes bearing spiritual gifts that he, he will teach you how to use them because we need to use them. There is a war between good, good and evil. And guess what? The war has already been fought. Because God does, is not limited by time. We win. win. You want to be part of that? You want to be part of the victorious side, yeah? Now you do it together. Now, what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. We're going to 
ask and invite Holy Spirit to come and baptize us. Are you ready? We'll do that together. Let's do it. Lord, I thank you right now for the privilege of praying with our brothers and sisters. I thank you because we are hungry and thirsty. And as your word said, those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness shall be filled. You are the righteousness that we are hungry and thirsty for. So, Lord, right now, baptize us. Come, come and fall afresh on us. Let your fire fall, as your word says, that our God is a consuming fire. Lord, come, come with fire, a fire that cannot be quenched. Revival fire. We say fire, Lord. Set us alight that the world will come and watch us burn for you. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome, Welcome back. back to the kingdom family. Please, I encourage you, get connected with the Bible teaching Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit filled, filled church. You need to be part of the body of Christ. Now, if you are in a country where you're not allowed to do, to, 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 to go to a church in person, to be part of a fellowship group, then you can do that online. Mm -hmm. You can do that online. So get connected. If you need help in finding a church, even if we, even though we don't live where you live, that's fine. We can look up for you and we can direct you in the right direction we can help in that as well or if you need prayer specific prayers please send us a message we do have as you can see on the screen all those and That's we have a website social... as well we have a website and we do have uh emails that you can contact us on for prayer requests as well amen amen now for those who are hearing um this uh, message and uh, whoever is online if uh you know your church need help uh, in teachings and um, preachings and and um, all the mat we have all the materials on our website and all those places. Um, feel free to give our contact to your leaders and your pastors, and we are more than happy to help out because this is what this ministry is about: is to reignite, to teach, and help and disciple churches. This is what our heart is for um, for the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. This brings us to our second part of the program which is called the collective where we spend time with those that are watching those that are listening and we pray prophesy whatever holy spirit leads us to do if you do have as always as i say if you do have specific prayer requests so that that was weird you you lift up the bottle it was clear yeah it was completely oh. clear yeah <laughs> if you do have specific prayer requests Write them down in the Facebook live chat section. That's a supernatural thing. She's drinking no, supernatural. No, it's work. not. I think the color, right? It's a yeah, color. Yeah, I think it's the color. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll get on to them. Amen. Amen. All right. This brings us to the collective. 